Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Julie's Orchids. So today's episode is just going to be a fairly quick what's in bloom and what's coming up to bloom. So I currently have four plants in bloom. One has been in bloom for a long time. This one's been in bloom here. This encyclia has been in bloom since June of 2022. This one's been in bloom for a little bit, this Brassia Shilo Okika, and looks like the flowers are starting to fade. This is our no ID sal. I'm naming Cape as it was a gift from my friend Cape, and it's finally opened its blooms for the first time in a while. And we still have in bloom this one. So let's look at each one of these plants individually. So we have Encyclia cochleata, and this Encyclia has been in bloom since June. Um, you can see how very long those flower spikes are. So I've, I've measured them, and they're about 15 inches or 40 centimeters. Um, now this plant I took to uh, an orchid show to be judged as a novice, and we came in first place for that one. And this is the same flower spikes, um, still just going and going. And as you can see, get you into focus here, we're still producing buds um, on both these spikes. So now this has been in bloom since June and it is a fragrant plant, but it has not been fragrant for a while. Uh, I do still have it in bark because it's been in bloom and hasn't been anywhere near wanting to make new roots. Um, but as we can see, we've got that, that are growing. So this one will definitely be getting repotted in the near future. Uh, I have no idea how long this thing is gonna continue to produce buds on these spikes, but it, it's gotten too tall for my shelves now. So Encyclia cochleata has been blooming for me since June of 2022. We'll have a little follow-up on this Brassia shilob okika. Um, and this was a seedling plant that I bought a few years ago, and this is its first flower spike. Now I got three blooms off the flower spike, but I had three buds blast, so half and half for a first time spiker. Uh, I'm not super upset with. Beautiful flowers, but as you can see they're starting to turn a bit more red than yellow and I can't detect their fragrance anymore at all so I'm unsure if it's just that they're hard to smell or it's now become non-fragrant. But first time blooming for me, first time blooming plant, Brassia Shilo Okika. And this beauty here is a no ID phalaenopsis that I have named Kate. I've named this Kate because a very good friend of mine, Kate, gave it to me when her husband and her moved from Perth, Western Australia, over to New South Wales. And you are not allowed to take plant matter out of Western Australia, so Kate had to surrender all of her house plants and her orchids, and she gave me this one. Uh, she gave me a couple, but this one's in bloom. So Kate said that she'd had it for a while, but it had never rebloomed for her. And it was really pretty healthy when I got it, so it didn't take much for me to just pop it over into pumice. Um, it's taken the changeover very well. It's even taken being accidentally bumped and having the pot knocked over by my husband um, and then getting shoved back in the pot pretty well. Um, it's quite a nice little trooper. You can see that when it got knocked off the shelf, it broke the pot, but it's still, the pot's holding up, so I'm leaving everything as is. Um, but this is no ID Phalaenopsis, and we're naming this one Kate. And she got it from Ikea here in Perth. And those are those beautiful flowers. And we're going to visit again Path Idiate. 
you can see that she's still looking very fresh with her first bud open. And we can see that this bud is really coming along quite nicely. Now, my experience with this plant, because I just got it um, two years ago, it, and I bought it in flower and bud, and what happened was um, the first flower came open, and then it dropped off, and then the second bud opened for me. So I was expecting that to happen this year, that this flower would fade before this bud matured and opened. Um, but now I'm beginning to question, maybe I'm going to get both in bloom at the same time. Um, I am not putting this one out here in my display area where I put my other blooming plants, um, mostly because I had another slipper orchid, my Phragmopedium, Amelia Arius Red Dancers. Um, I put her over there when her bloom opened and it immediately blasted from the, I think, air conditioning blowing on it. So I don't want to risk this one. Um, now, unfortunately, my Phragmopedium, Amelia Arius, the other slipper that I lost the first opening bloom on, um, the second bloom, also the spike grew so tall without me realizing it in a week that it grew into the light and it burned itself. So uh, even though we did get two buds on that one, got zero flowers and that was all this grower's mistake, but Path Idiate is just being a champ, keeping this nice beautiful flower open and creating this other new bud. Now what I do like about slipper orchids, some of them, is that whereas they are slow growers and they too, do take a long time to flower again, you at least get beautiful foliage while you're waiting on your blooms to come back. So I don't um, stake the flowers. I don't know that this one it would make it look any better. I like the sort of pendulous kind of floppy motion that this one has. And looking forward to things to come in the future. We have my deflask, my swapped deflask. I did not deflask this one. Um, I swapped this. My friend Jane uh, deflasked it. And I swapped one of my flask babies for this one. Um, my understanding that this is just sub two years out of flask, so I was surprised to see the flower spike coming. And then you will have seen, I'll put a link in here, the episode um, where we're questioning whether this truly is a Phalaenopsis aphrodite or if it is a Phal equestris. Um, I've since spoken to Jane, and Jane says, no, pretty for certain that this is an equestris. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to look at the buds here because we're finally getting some buds. And they're just little tiny, very hard to get into focus here. There go. They're just little tiny, dinky tiny. They're appearing to be white. Um, but kind of not 100% sure on this. So it looks like we have still just a little bit of time to wait for the foul Aphrodite query equestris to open. Um, at least we're going to get one flower, maybe two. Only time will tell. So first time spiker for me, um, first time spiker for the plant, Oncidopsis frans nymph. Um, starting to lose this leaf from one of the older pseudobulbs back here. But this is the first time that this plant is spiking and it's just barely starting to grow its spikes. So it'll be a while before we have some blooms to show on this one, but we'll definitely do a follow-up on this. So we do have a few things coming. Um, unfortunately, most of my collection are smaller seedling to near flowering size plants. Um, so we don't have a whole lot of blooms to show you yet, but we will uh, in the future, particularly years coming. Um, 
with all the little tiny ones I have. It's, it's easier here in Perth to get seedlings and flasks than adult plants. Um, so to get some of the more hard to find ones, you, you have to get them as seedlings or from flask. Um, so that's what most of my collection actually is. The flowering plants that I do have are, were bought as seedlings to near flowering size and they're slowly starting to do what this one is doing and you know, after two years of, with them as being seedling near flowering size plants, they're starting to do their first flowering. Yeah, can't complain, this is what the whole hobby is about. So that's our episode for today. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please give me a thumbs up. A subscribe would be great. And everyone have a happy, healthy day. Thank you again.